We've looked at throwing exceptions and a little bit at catching them and handling them, but not very much. So let's look at catching them now. Running this code, we get the index out of bounds exception from line 71. Uh, let's go ahead, save this and give it another run real quick. If I click on that line 71, that at the top is where the exception was actually thrown from and it was in the get previous node method. So this is where it was actually thrown from. What called this method here is on the second line. It was the remove. So if I click there, it'll go to the remove. And I'm looking in the linked, my linked list. That's where that's coming from. You can see it right there. My link list dot remove. So remove is the method. Now that was called by my testing code, which is this third one right here. If I click that third one, this line is what originated all of that. So I intentionally put a bad index in and tried to remove from the negative one index. So of course I would get index out of bounds exception. So we looked at how to achieve all of this, but now we're going to actually catch that exception and then let our code continue to run. So the exception we're gonna catch right here is index out of bounds exception. I just copied that. So we're gonna put in a try and catch. It's a little bit like an if else. So the try is what we're attempting to uh, execute and the catch is what we'll do if it does not execute. And right here, you have to put a try without a catch. Now they don't let me, and there's also a finally clause. We're just gonna catch right here uh, and they won't let me auto correct it. So we'll just write catch. Now the exception I'm looking for is an out of bounds, index out of bounds. You, this will only catch index out of bounds. So if a null pointer exception is thrown, this catch won't actually do it. Now you can catch other exceptions. This one right here will catch any exception. And because I first tried to catch the index out of bounds, if it's an index out of bounds, whatever I put in here is gonna run. And if it's a different exception that's not index out of bounds, it will be caught here. So for example, a null pointer, if a null pointer is thrown, it would be caught here. Uh, and you can do index out of bounds, no pointer, and then other exception and handle them all differently. Uh, or you can just catch all of them with just catch exception. I'm only looking for one type of exception, which is this index out of bounds exception. And so it'll just print caught. And then it will go ahead and we probably don't want this line to print out if I didn't remove it. So one way to do that well, let's just leave it like this here. Uh, now it says element may not be initialized. Uh, we'll just put some uh, initial value in here. So uh, NetBeans will stop complaining and we'll run it. So I'm expecting the exception to be thrown and then I'm gonna catch it here and it's just gonna print out caught and then it should continue to execute the rest of the code after the try catch. So there we go. You see the caught was printed out. And now of course, this printing this line of code is pretty useless because I didn't succeed in removing it. Uh, and then just printing out element, which had that initial value is pretty useless too. So what I'm gonna do is push this up inside the try and then I'll, I'll just print out the list afterwards. It's totally fine. Um, it might be a good idea to maybe even put that before and something like this, attempting list remove. And we won't have the return value yet. 
So we'll just say attempting remove at the index, and then we'll actually remove. This line of code is what's going to cause the exception to be thrown. And then we should put a little more detail other than just caught. So there's a couple things you can do. One of them is you could concatenate the exception, which of course calls the to string method. And what this does, I believe it just gets the message inside. Well, we'll find out in a couple seconds. And so when I created the exceptions, I in their constructor, I added a string in the constructor. That's their message. And you can see right here, caught. And then this is the message, or well, this is the two string of that particular exception. And I, let's see, created that. Okay, now if you wanna see where it was created from, you're gonna to have to take this line and move it outside the try catch and then run it again and now the exception will happen and it won't be caught because it's not inside the try and this can be useful if you want to see all of the methods that were called to create that exception you can see all methods right here that i clicked on earlier but that's how you can get them back if you ever need it just take your line that caused the exception move it out of the try now if i put it back in and run it Okay, so that's just basic try catch in your testing code. And of course I can go with other indexes, indices, which I will do in a minute here.